of light and blessings shamanic i work priestess here um first and foremost thank you thank you thank you for all those that have watched this very long series because i know it's a lot me posting videos every single day and trying to watch them as much as you can so i've always tried to keep them short but welcome to 29 days of melanated excellence the first year that i've ever done this series um spirit led of course um, and the card of the, the card of the month that I got for the series and stuff, cause a lot of you guys that I know I work with the chakras was faith. They just told me to pretty much have faith in the process. Like it's going to be okay. Cause I'm like, I don't think anybody's going to watch, but I've been very pleasantly surprised. I've received beautiful feedback. Um, also wanted to say my channel reached a milestone. We are over 3000 subscribers. Woo! So I started this channel two years ago. Um, it'll be three years in the summer. That's crazy. Um, and my channel the first year was rough because it was I barely had any subscribers the first year um, and things like that. So I'm just amazed at how quickly the, the channel has been growing since 2019. Um, because, uh, like I said, that first year was rough. Um so yeah, I just wanted to kind of say that. So like 3,000, woo! -hoo! Okay, so welcome to day 24 of 29 Days of Melanated Excellence. And I just got my daughter off to school about 30 minutes ago. I, you know, had a light breakfast. And I'm having my second cup of coffee. I'm trying to wake up. I'm going to be getting ready to do my readings i usually like to wait about an hour from the time i get home when i start my first appointments because i like to be in that you know professional readers mind frame because you know my readings are live and things like that so i have to be ready to go once you guys book me and and, and we do the, the the reading and things like that so today we're going to talk about a haitian mambo from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Yay! Um, and her name is Mama Lola. Okay. Mama Lola was born Marie Therese Alourdes Massina Champagne, 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 sorry if I mispronounced your name, Levins, Levinsky. She was born in Haiti in 1936, otherwise known as Mama Lola. I'm just going to call her Mama Lola because I don't want to butcher her name. She is one of the most famous uh, voodoo priestesses, you know, Mambo pretty much, um, in the United States. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's had a book published about her by an anthropologist called Catherine McCartney Brown. And again, Mama Lola was born in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. So that's how um, well known she is that someone actually wrote a book about her. Okay. Um, she is the youngest child of Philomis Masena, who is also a Mambo. So she, her mother was a Mambo. Her father was a lawyer. Unfortunately, I'm not going to say unfortunately, but uh, I'm sure that she would never regret any of her children. But the age you know the age she was only 14 years old when she got pregnant with her first child Jean Perdy. uh the child's father name was uh Ab Abner um and his parents sent him to Chicago when they found out about Mama Lola's pregnancy Lola then went on to have a second child and um he was a like a famous photographer that was in Haiti for um, those purposes and she was 15 years old by the time that she had two children and she was making money by being a singer and earning $62 a month uh, with a troupe called the Forloric uh, Troupe and um, in Haiti and she married Anton Kowalski on December 30th 1954 uh, Mama Lola got pregnant and unfortunately lost the baby um, because of domestic violence and due to this domestic violence she had to pretty much you know escape out of this situation 
uh, Mama Lola was forced to move in with her mother um, because of financial, um, trying to provide for her children. Unfortunately, she lost her job as a tobacco inspector and went into poverty, you know, um, because of the situation, um, you know, Haiti does have a large impoverished population as do many Caribbean islands, but unfortunately they always try to make Haiti look a certain way. But a lot of Caribbean islands, they're not always well to do. Even U.S. territory, Puerto Rico has a high poverty rate as well, especially with all these nat um, natural disasters, constant earthquakes and things like that. So this is starting to become a common theme in the Carib in the Caribbean, you know, that people, you know, it, it, it's hard. So um, she had to make choices. And so um, she was forced to have to uh, do sexual favors in exchange for money um, and things of that nature. Um, so because of that, in her 20s, she decided to leave Haiti and she came to America in 1962. Um, by this time, she had three children who she was forced to leave with her mother. She wasn't able to bring them to the United States. Uh, Mama Lola ended up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, in 1963, she had been hospitalized twice due to illnesses. Um, the second time, she met someone named Yvonne Constant, who provided food and shelter for her, and they became great friends. Around this time, the Loa started calling her into voodoo. Remember, she comes from a mother who was a mambo, which is a high-ranking voodoo saint practitioner, okay? And <clears throat> Cousin Saka came to Mama Lola's sister-in-law and told her that she needed to return to Haiti. <clears throat> For those that don't know, Cousin is a Loa. So when she went to Haiti, okay, the spirit said they were going to heal her, okay? Ogun, in this trip, then possessed her mother and told her that she needed to become a Mambo. Okay, so she got her healing. She was healed in Haiti through voodoo rituals. And Ogun uh, Ferrer told her basically that she had to get initiated into voodoo. So she made two trips, um, two separate trips to Haiti in order to do these initiations. Um, she worked in a laundry section for two years before she quit. This was how she was making the money to get initiated and she started to become proactive and she worked as a voodoo saint and sold her services to sustain and support her family. So the spirits found a way for her to sustain and support her family through her spirituality. By 1975, she had enough money to bring her kids. <clears throat> so once she started practicing voodoo, the spirits opened up the doors for her and she was able to afford to bring her children to live with her in Brooklyn new york um even though she was even though she went through hardships um there was a fire and she lost her home and she had to move with her friends temporarily she still did her second initiation and by doing that the spirits opened up the doors and continued to give her um the finances that she needed to sustain her family by 1978 you know she was a well-known mambo and she met Karen McCartney Brown and she was on one of her trips because Mama Lola's initiated into voodoo, but she's also in initiated into Santeria. She's like me. I practice more than one um, spirituality um, and people say you can't do that. Yes, you can. As I said on my, on my video, there are Haitian people that are initiated into voodoo and Santeria. We have to remember that in Haiti, there's this imaginary line between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. At one time, it was one country. Now it's one island, two separate countries. So Santeria is very big in the Dominican Republic. There's a lot of uh, Haitians that grew up multicultural. So uh, either they live in Santo Domingo and they're exposed to Santeria, so they practice both things, and vice versa, or they're actually culturally mixed because you do have Dominicans and Haitians that do marry and things of that nature so it's not that uncommon even haitian botanicas that i've gone to i've seen both voodoo statues and spirits and and things like that with orisha stuff uh you know statues and things like that so it's it's not unheard of 
Um, so yeah, so like I was saying, so she was so excited to meet her. She wrote a book about her and the book was about her, you know, getting initiated into Santeria and, and things of that nature, um, because she was an initiate of Santeria, Voodoo. Um, she practiced Catholicism, which I've talked about in yesterday's video, uh, Catholicism and Voodoo and Santeria go hand in hand, Christianity and these paths go hand in hand. Um, she became very famous among Haitian immigrants and Haitian Americans and also Westerners. By 2007, Mama Lola, okay, uh, she worked for celebrities before. Like she got to the status where she was working for multimillionaires, uh, celebrities. And one such example is when Tori Spelling featured her in her reality show. Um, and she was helping to do a cleansing and helping her to uh, pretty much set up an ancestral altar and things like that in the show. So this is how big Mama Lola has become. It is not unheard of for celebrities to contact uh, Mambos and Hugans and Bokul. Um, it is not unheard of to have um, Mambos being contacted by government officials. The Clintons have done it and they're not the only ones. Um, it is said even the Bushes, okay? Even conservative. Um, and things like that have gone all the way to Haiti. There was one mambo that literally, I remember I was in an Uber and the driver was of Haitian descent and he was telling me about Marie Louise. Um, is a mambo, a very well-known mambo in, in, in Haiti. And she literally had people fly in from all over the world, like helicopters and all these things coming to her consistently when she was alive. And uh, famous politicians, celebrities, and all these things, and she, you know, pretty much used that money to help her people. A lot of these big uh, voodoo practitioners do give money back to Haiti. So not only do they provide for their family, they're also providing for the Haitian economy. And that's what you're supposed to do. Um, it's one of the reasons why they keep these traditions close traditions within family because not everybody's going to think that way and some people are going to be like I don't need to do anything for Haiti but Haitians know you're supposed to give back to the country of origin it's like giving credit to where the traditions came from because voodoo is from Africa but Haitian voodoo is unique to Haiti it's it's a different branch of if that makes sense like when I would talk about Ifa Santilla is it's a branch of Ifa it's it, it has Ifa uh uh, elements to it but it's its own system it's kind of like christianity is an umbrella term you have the protestant you have lutherans you have methodists you have jehovah witness you have pentecostal you have baptist you have mormons they're all under the umbrella of christian but they're all their own unique different types of christianity with their own rules dogmas and doctrines so that's kind of the same thing with afro-caribbean religious practices um, that are, they have similarities to Africa, but they're their own system and their own right, uh, with their own doctrines, uh, dogmas, and rules and regulations, and things of that nature. Okay, um, so that concludes the video on Mama Lola. I also wanted to do two things. I wanted to make a quick disclaimer, and then I will end the video with that. I usually do not try not to feed trolls, but I had to pretty much block somebody recently. So um, there are people that contact me through the contact form of my website. And for the most part, people listen and it's for business inquiries, pretty much asking about my services and things of that nature, which is perfectly fine. I would expect you to ask about my services if you're going to invest money in me. Like, why not? Right. I would do it. And so I don't mind that. Um, I don't even mind somebody asking me, what are your qualifications? Like, how do you read? Because, you know, people are looking for a particular type of reader and you have to make sure that I'm the right reader for you, so on and so forth, because you want a positive experience. I want a positive experience. So I don't mind people asking me about my qualifications. What I don't like, and this question doesn't bother me depending on who's asking it and how it's asked. Like, tone, delivery, and the use of words are so they're so they're much more powerful than people um give words credit 
And what I mean by that is, so asking me, oh, what's your racial background doesn't bother me. People ask me that all the time. Some people get offended by that. That doesn't really bother me because I know that I kind of look like I fit in a lot of different boxes because I am very racially mixed. So I get it. Like, what are you anyways? Like, that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is when someone recently emailed me and the email started off good. I won't say who the, what the name is. They've been blocked anyways. Oh, so you know, before I read with you, how long have you been, you know, how long have you been doing professional readings? Very legit question. Where they lost me and where I got offended was the following question after that statement, after that question was, because remember, it was before I will read with you, these are things I need to know. One, how long have you been reading? Perfectly valid. Um, the second question wasn't, what is your racial background? So basically, you have to know my racial background in order for you to read with me. Not going to happen. Why should my racial background be important to you for a reading? How does that validate my skills as a reader? So... Are there certain brown people that are acceptable to you, but other brown people aren't? So I kind of kind of directly let them know that that's a bit that's prejudiced and racist because why does my race have to do anything with you wondering if you should get a reading from me? You know what I mean? So that's weird. Um, so I pretty much told them I'm not the reader for you and I'm going to block you because I don't even want to talk to you. So. So I just wanted to say that. Um, another thing that I wanted to address as well. Um, I did a video ooh, a long time ago that was about respecting Orishas and Loas. They're not God and goddesses and respecting um, the religion. I don't tell anybody what to do. There are books that are written. A lot of people are noticing that they're not accurate um, and things like that. And I understand that people feel a calling and they want to... Um, find out who's in their spirit core and that's why I offer spiritual investigation which is just a regular reading but this one's focused on your spirit core and you can book any one of my time sessions when I read you there there's I don't do readings by topic and charge you by topic you could literally book me for whatever type of reading you want um I charge by the time not by the type of reading if that makes sense so you would just have to put like i want a spiritual investigation when you uh pay on the on the comment section when you're pay, making a payment and then i'll know and then i'll do the reading for that but that's about it you don't have to do anything else after that i didn't see it necessary to put it in my shop because i feel like that's a reading like any other reading this one's just more spiritually based but if it's confusing i might actually just put it up there i guess i don't know i just felt like it was redundant kind of because it would be the same pricing as any other type of reading i don't know anyways so that's one um a second thing i wanted to address as well is so when i was talking about god and goddesses and the odishas and loas not really being god and goddesses they're odishas and the loas in their own right and things like that um i don't mind mentoring people but my classes are full at this time um everybody that i'm mentoring i have prayed over because i want to make sure i'm mentoring the right people um because not everybody's going to come to you with good intentions and i know this everything that i do is spiritually based right i can only teach but so many people right um i can still do if you do a spiritual investigation um you can pay as you go and i'll teach you the the fundamental things to kind of get you started um, if you book enough time in a reading and things like that. So that's not a problem. Um, I can do that. But I have people that are like wanting me to teach them for free. I have people that want me to teach them and then they're going to make the information public, which that's a no-no to me um, because these are closed traditions for a reason. Um, the spirits don't like for you to share these things. They're like people. It's like if your friend tells you a secret and they tell you not to tell somebody and you go and tell people, that person's not going to be your friend anymore. So that spirit's not going to want to work with you because you betrayed a confidence. When somebody takes you into their spiritual family and they swear you into secrecy, you have to, you have to take those vows and those oaths um, sacred because if everybody knew the information, the information then loses its power. 
the reason why these closed traditions are so powerful is because they're practicing secrecy. And I've said that on numerous videos, you know, um, and things of that nature. If you're meant to practice these things, you will find the right teacher, you the right mentor and the right situation, you know, um, because not everybody's called to it. There are people that are called to it and you will find the ideal situation. I love doing spiritual investigation and telling people what spirits they have in their spirit court and I can get you started and you can pay as you go if you need more um, guidance and things like that. I do those types of readings as well, those types of counseling sessions as well. As far as like a two month intensive uh, course, I already have all those spots filled. Um, I'm pretty much booked up this whole 2020. I cannot take on any more students at this time. So much love, much light, much blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next video, if you want to work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis, shamanic at whitepriestess.com. I connect to your past, present, and future, give you time frames. I can tell you what he, she, or they think about you. I also do spiritual investigations, which are all included in the price points of my reading packages. I can read on finances, love, money, and all those things. And I also do angel readings and things like that, okay? Until the next video. Oh, and I also do work and provide spiritual services. Sorry. Much love, much light, much blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. And until the next video, bye.